Hello friends, once again, great to see you. Pastor Pete here, coming to you from Dundee, Oregon, and uh, it's time for Coffee with Pete, so grab your cup, uh, coffee, tea, whatever your beverage of choice is, and uh, open up your Bible. We're going to be looking at the fourth chapter of the letter that Paul wrote to the Philippians. So Philippians 4, we're going to start about the second or third verse, I guess. So here's to you, and let's get going. There's a story here, and then there's one verse I want to pull. The story says this, starting in verse 2. I entreat Iodia and I entreat Syntyche to agree in the Lord. Yes, I ask you also, true companion. This is Paul's writing the letter to someone there in Philippi. I ask you to help these women who have labored side by side with me in the gospel together with Clement and the rest of my fellow workers whose names are in the book of life. Verse 4, Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Let your reasonableness be known to everyone. The Lord is at hand. Don't be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God, and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. And he goes on to say, whatever is true and noble and honorable and all those things, think about those things. So the, what we have this, uh, I want to get at one verse, but to give you context, some familiar for scriptures that you've heard, and maybe you've heard individually some of these familiar verses. I want to give you the bigger context, because Paul's writing to them and saying, hey, some of you whom we all appreciate and have worked together for the same cause, and are still in the same cause, some of you are not getting along and others among you are needed to bring into that a sense of God's grace and mercy and justice and love and forbearance. Just all of you work together to resolve this thing. He says it right in the middle of that. Well, I guess I want to ask you maybe even that. We're in a season of time right now, it comes around every four years especially, where people that we know and love and care about might disagree with us very strongly and vehemently. And sometimes for reasons we can't understand, and sometimes our reasons they don't understand. We're in a political season. Well, they I don't know if they were in a political season, but there was conflict that because of the conflict was minimizing their ability to actually show God's love to others, even to each other. And so Paul was appealing to them, saying, there's ways that you can resolve this and you should go about it in a way that reflects the glory of God and his love for us. So I want to highlight today verse 4. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. And I just want to talk about what it means to rejoice always. That and he's saying it in this difficult situation, you should still rejoice. And is he saying to us, be happy that you have this trouble? I don't think so. I don't think it's what he's saying. It's a phrase that Paul used multiple times through the Bible. Rejoice always. Sometimes when you're you're dip, when there's difficulty, but sometimes also because you overcome difficulty. And and I, but I also want you to know, um, it's not necessarily he's not giving it as the exclusive response to difficulty. He's not saying, "Hey, you're in a difficult time. You know what? Just take a deep breath and rejoice." Just rejoice in the Lord. Be happy in, that you have God, irregardless of how it all turns out. Not at all. He's, he's not trying to be happy about the fact that despite difficulties, we still have God. That's true, but that's not what he's saying. He's saying, in essence, that because of God and because of the nature that God has displayed to us, and now because we are filled with God's Spirit, we can begin to appropriate and also model our lives after him and we can show God's love and grace and mercy to others and be filled. Now, let me give it to you a little, a little different angle on this. Like the shortest verse in the Bible often is quoted as Jesus wept. That's John eleven thirty five 35 when he got the news that uh, someone had died and he needed to go and he just wept because it was a close friend when Lazarus had died. Jesus wept. But also, equally, tied for that, the shortest verse in the Bible, is 1 Thessalonians 5.12. Rejoice always. So how do we take these two things that are, one is a display of the compassion of Christ 
he wept. And the other one is a command from the apostle saying, Rejoice in the Lord because you have God. God is in you and you are in him. Then rejoice. How do we take this weeping, this compassionate weeping, and join it together with this always rejoicing? And honestly, I think that's that's showing that Christ's nature, God's nature, has multifaceted. And that even as we are receiving compassion, that we're, we're commanded also to mourn with those who mourn. How would we do that if we're always rejoicing? Well, there's a humility that comes. It says, just as Christ, his joy was made complete even as he went to the cross. His, his pain and his anguish was also very extreme, but his joy was made complete. So as we are compassionate to others, in the joy of God fills us in that moment, we, we can show compassion and mourn with others and even find ways to disagree, but also be reunited in Christ with our brothers and sisters. We can do that while remaining joyfully confident of the mercy and the grace that God has shown to us. And that's what I think Paul is talking about. So today, friends, whatever disagreements or struggles might come your way, whether it's your own struggles or one of your friends, I pray that you will remain in Christ and that you will be joyful in remembering his compassion, even as you express that same to others. God bless you, friends. In Jesus' name, amen.